I will show you two of my favorite Sudoku strategies that will help you solve 50% more hard puzzles, plus a bonus trick you can use to solve these puzzles even faster. And with that, it's solving time. So first, let's get some easy solves out of the way. You might see with these one, eights, and the eight right here, you can solve this cell for an eight in block one. And then with these two eights, only one place for an eight in block six. And with these two eights, you only have one place for an eight in block eight. Greetings, friend. This is puzzle one from my latest rewards puzzle pack. I want to thank A Cash Dulani for making this and all the other puzzles in the pack. You can solve this puzzle using two of my favorite and most powerful Sudoku strategies. Plus, I'll show you a nice little trick that makes this solving this even easier. So let me show you that first proven strategy. It's not even what makes the puzzle hard, but you can get really far if you can spot it. The easy way to get there is to notice that these one and twos cover all these cells here in column three. So they're restricted to these two cells in block four. That makes them a hidden pair. The one and two have to be somewhere here in block four, and they're restricted to these two cells. And what it does is now it restricts these three cells to the three remaining digits in the block, a six, seven, or an eight. You can remove the seven there and remove the eight there. So this is our first proven strategy, and it's called a locked triple. And so it's a naked triple. These three cells can only be a six, seven, or an eight, so they go in those cells but it's locked, which means it's a naked triple for the block as well as the column. And when you have that situation, they act as a pointing and claiming triple, which means you can eliminate six, seven, eight from all of these other cells in the column. Super powerful if you can find this, and I'll show you how we can take advantage of that. So you might see here with these ones, you notice that there's the ones are restricted here in block two, so it makes them a pointing pair. And so one can't be here because it would block out all ones in block two. And you might notice that the ones are restricted with these two ones are right here. So I'm gonna look at digit restrictions and apply this lock triple to get more solves. So I look at the ones, now I'm gonna move up sequentially uh, two through nine to see what other restrictions you can get. So with the twos, You'll notice twos are restricted there to go with this two and the two here. That hidden pair acts as a pointing pair. So the twos are restricted to these two cells in block five. And then with the two here and here, twos are restricted to these two cells in block seven. And it restricts the twos now to these cells in block nine. And with the threes, these threes, you have two places for a three in block five. So with hard puzzles, you want to find these restrictions. If you solve this cell for something other than three, you can solve that for three immediately. And so kind of kind of use this along with the knowledge that this is a lock triple to get these first solves out of the way. Uh, if you move on to the fours, there's nothing you can solve the fours. Three places here, I don't mark that because you want to look for just two possibilities in the block. But with the fives, we've got some solves going on here. With these two fives, Solve for a five right there in block one. And then with these fives, solve for a five in block two. And then in block nine, with these two fives, you can solve this for five, displacing that two. That's why you make the mark to get that solved very quickly. And then with this five, you can solve for a five in block eight. And then with these fives and these fives, only one place for five in block seven. And now with all four fives, Peering into the block, you are going to be able to solve for five right here in block five. And you got all the fives knocked out. All right, move on to the sixes. With these two sixes, two places for a six in block nine. And now with these sixes, could you put the five there? Two places for a six in block five. And in block one, with this six and this six, and these sixes acting as a pointing triple, a six can't be there limits the sixes of these two cells. This is now the power you're gonna see of this lock triple. Move on to the sevens. With these sevens, you can solve for seven in block three. 
And with these sevens, and you have two sevens here that act as a pointing pair as part of that lock triple. You can put sevens here in block one. And then in block seven, with this seven and the sevens from the lock triple, two places for seven here. And you might notice the one and seven are on top of each other. That means you found another hidden pair. They're the only two possibilities for those two cells, so nothing else can be in there except the one and the seven. And then with this seven and the seven here, two sevens and block eight. And now we can move on to the eights. And you'll see because of this eight, two possibilities for the eight here, part of that lock triple. And then in block five with these eights and this eight, two eights right there. Move on to the nines. I'm going to show you a nice, neat trick with the nines. All right, let's use this lock triple to go with the one, two, five already in column three. It means the only three remaining digits are a three, four, and a nine, right? Well, what you might see is that this block right here, block eight, has six digits in there. One, two, three, five, six, and eight. You just need a four, seven, nine. Well, where do they go? They go right here. So this creates another lock triple, right? So just like the six, seven, eight right there, now you have a four, seven, nine restricted in the block and now in the row. And so what does that do? Well, it means a four, seven, nine cannot be anywhere else in the row. So you can remove the four and a nine from right there because you know they have to be in one of these purple cells. So now you can solve this for a three and restrict these to a four or a nine. And since you have a four, seven, nine here, two, five, three, six, eight there, this has to be a one now. And you look at the impact, row, column, and block. And column nine, where can a six go, right? It can't be here now because of this six. And it can't be here because of this six. And you just put in the one. So now this six is the only place for a six in column nine, which leaves you with a three, four, nine, naked triple and block nine. This isn't a lock triple because it's not all in the same row or column. However, with this three, you can remove the three there and mark threes here. With this four, remove the four there, and now you have a nice pointing pair of fours that look up into block three. So you can restrict the fours of these two cells, right? Because they have to be in column eight in one of these cells down here. All right, so you just made all that information and all that solves with another locked trip. And also what we can do with the nines is notice that with this nine, you have a nice pointing pair of nines in block six. And then you got two places for nine here because of this nine in block seven. And with this four, you got two places for four there. So you might want to mark that as well. And what you're going to see now is with this four, look at the impact, two places for four here in block one. So it makes it a nice pointing pair of fours. So what does that do up here? Well, it means this has to be a four in block two. It can't be in any of these cells, which displaces a four there. And I just saw for four right there in block three. And then you can see with this one and the one right here, you can solve for one block three, gives you a nice three nine naked pair. And you might be wondering what's the significance of the letters L-U-N-A-R. Well, the pack has to do with uh, going to the moon, Apollo 11 in 1969. And that happened in July. And it's a July pack. What you want to so find is the value of this N digit right here, right? If you can figure out what this value is, you add it to the values of all the ends. There's words in every other puzzle in the pack. And you'd add those values together to get the final solution. You get a shout out on my channel. So we're kind of working our way to figure out what this letter N is going to be in this puzzle. And so you see, we had another lock triple right there. that gave you so much information uh, that we were able to make many more solves. And what do you want to do after that? Well, we're going to look for another locked triple. We're going to use the letters right here because you see this is a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It means this has to be a one, two, or a nine. The one, two, or nine is another locked triple in block two and in row three. This can't be a one. And so I'll color this. I know it might be a little hard to see the one, two, and nine. The coloring helps. 
And then you'll notice since a 9 has got to be in one of these three cells, this can't be a 9 anymore. So you can solve this now for a 4. And you saw that for a 4, this has to be your 9 displacing that 4, displacing that 2. Okay, and then you might notice with the 1, 2, 9 here, you got also in this column, you need a 1, 2, or 7 the remaining. Well, the 1, 2 is right there. This has to be your 7. That's a naked single 7, which allows you to disambiguate the 1 and 7 down here, and you can solve the 2 and the 1 right there. Which now gives you nice three six nine naked triple. Okay, and so log triple going into a nice naked triple. How can you take that and use that to your advantage? Move the nine right there, and you can remove the three from right there. What we want to look at is this is a one two nine, so this has to be three or six. Three or nine right there. What's across here? It looks like you need a two six or a nine. Well, with this two. That has to be your two. I'll get out of color mode. And then you'd need, it looks like a six or a nine right there. Can we do better than that? Of course, with this nine, that means that's gonna be your three in the corner. Bum, bum, bum. There's your nine, there's your six, there's gonna be your three. Okay, you're wondering, how is this a hard puzzle? Look at all these solves we're getting, right? I haven't even shown you a second advanced strategy yet. With this four, that's got to be a 9. That's got to be your 4. Put your 3 right there. And then you see what you have is a 1, 6, and 9 here in column 7. So what else can we do to help with that solve? Well, with this 4, that can't be a 4 anymore. Look across row 4 here. You have a 1, 2, 4, 5, 7. So that's a heavy house. There's 5 digits filled out. You just need a 3, 6, 8, and 9. Well, with the 3, 6, and the 8 right here, that's a 9. That's a naked single 9, which removes a 9 from right there. And with the 8 and the 3 there, that's actually going to be a 6, because you already have a 1 right there, which means that's going to be your 8, and that's going to be your 3, displacing this 8. So you can remove the 6s from right there. With this 9, you got a, a 1 right there, and you got a 9 right there. With this 8, you can remove the 8 from right there. It gives you a nice 6-7 naked pair. And now this is going to be about as far as you can go. I can fill out the rest of these digits, but you're going to see there's no more easy solves. This is where you need that second advanced strategy. So in order to fill this out, look across the heavy houses. You need a 167 in row 5. So that's a 17. This is going to be a 16. Okay. And now at this 9, that's just a 4, 7 right there. Look across row 6. You got a 1, 3, 5, 8, 9. You need a 2, 4, 6, and 7. You got a 6 in this column, so that's a 2, 4, 7. You got 2, 7 here, so that's a 4, 6. And then you got 6 there. That's a 2, and you got a 4 in there, so that's a 2 and a 7. And so you got to find that second powerful strategy to make more progress here. Before I show you that second powerful strategy, I want you to know you may be able to solve hard Sudokus easier than you think. I offer monthly reward packs that you can use to learn powerful and proven Sudoku strategies and solve up to 50% more hard puzzles. And the real value is you can keep your mind sharp for years to come in a fun and exciting way. Look what this Smarty Party member had to say about my puzzle packs. So, click on the pinned comment to get the rest of this pack and a new one each month because you want to keep your mind sharp, right? Okay, so I'm going to show you that neat little trick first. You notice that this cannot be a 9 anymore and this can't be a 2. So every cell that's still remaining has two digits in it. It's a bye-bye cell, except for this one right here. So for this cell, that has three. Well... What you know is this puzzle has a unique solution. There's only one unique solution. So anything that would create more than one solution, you can discard. It won't solve the puzzle, right? If you had a 7 removed from this cell right here, what you notice is now you don't have two possibilities for this cell. And this could be a 2, which would force you know, a 1 there, 
nine there, two there, and you can go on solving this whole puzzle for each of those values. But if you put a four here, you would see that you get a seven here, and that would put a one here, a two there, a nine here, a one there, and you'd see all the opposite values would be possible in this puzzle. You could finish all the way around. So you have to find and solve this cell for the one value that guarantees a unique solution. And the one that does it is the one that appears three times in the block, column, and the row. And the only digit that appears three times is that seven. So this is called a bug plus one, by value universal grade plus one. You can immediately solve this for a seven and continue on with the rest of the puzzle. However, that nice little trick only works if the solution is unique. If you want to know the proven strategy that will actually solve this without worrying about uniqueness, then what you have to find is that you have a relationship between these three cells. You notice that this is a 1, 7. It shares a column with this 1, 2. And it shares the block with this 2, 7. So you have all three paired possibilities of digits 1, 2, and 7. If this is a 1, that would have to be a 2. If this is a 7, that would have to be a 2. So any time any value of this orange cell puts a 2 in one of the blue cells, that means you can remove a 2 from any digit that sees both of the blue cells. If it shares column and row like this cell right here or this cell right there. This is a Sudoku XY wing, and it's part of the XY chain family, which is super powerful. You're going to solve 80% of the puzzles that you find using normal seven strategies in my free Sudoku solving guide. If you want to solve 90%, like 50% of those hard puzzles, then you need to know how these XY wings and XY chains work. You find these, you're going to be solving 90% or more of all the puzzles you're going to see and 50% more of all those puzzles that are deemed hard because this is awesome stuff. What does this do for us? Well, it allows you to solve for a nine right there and a two right here. And more importantly, now you can solve the end digit for a one. And remember, I just helped you solve 20% of my next puzzle pack. So you plug that in with the values from the other end digits and the other puzzles and you can get, give me that final solution, I'm going to give you a shout out. So I just helped you out. Click on the pinned comment to join the Smarty Party and get the rest of this pack. But what does this mean now for this puzzle? It means that's got to be your six. This is going to be a one. That's got to be your two. This is going to be a seven, which means that's a four. That's going to be your nine. This has to be the four. That's going to be a seven. 6, and your last digit is a 7. Now check out this next video if you want to see more of that bug plus 1 trick. Thank you so much for watching.